Hey everyone, it's Jack here, Talk Narrow City. I hope you guys are all doing very well indeed. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in once again. I hope you really enjoyed uh, the video earlier in the week with Robbie from AFTV. Um, a brilliant preview and I think it explains what we've got coming up this weekend really well. I thought I'd drop on to give my thoughts ahead of this game at the Emirates. Uh, it's worth noting, it's a uh, big thanks to One Football as always for sponsoring the preview and the review content on Talk Norwich City this season. Uh, I headed onto the app and I voted first of all for who I thought was going to win and I of course voted for Norwich City. And surprisingly, from over 50,000 One Football user votes, 36% of that vote thinks that Norwich City are going to come out victorious. 58% of people think Arsenal are going to win. Just 6% of people think it's going to be a draw. I think if you would have taken this poll in any other season when it's Arsenal at home against Norwich City, I would suspect that 75%, 80%, even higher than that, would have thought that Arsenal would come out with all three points. It shows... How times change. Arsenal struggling this season. They're 20th. We're 19th. They're the only team, uh, no, one of two teams, I think, not to score in the division this season. So below us um, in the table, just one team below us, and it's Arsenal. Um, as always, on OneFootball as well, you can download it using the link in the description. Uh, there's some really good stats on there. Arsenal have lost just two of their 18 Premier League meetings with Norwich City, seven of them being draws. Uh, and Arsenal have scored at least three goals in six of their last seven home games against Norwich, winning 4-0 in July 2020. Can you remember that one? Towards the tail end of that Premier League season when everyone was over it. Um, that wasn't happy hunting for Norwich City. Loads of great stuff on One Football. You can download it in the description down below. This is a, a really fascinating game for Norwich City because usually you go to the Emirates expecting to maybe pick up a point if you're lucky. Um, I can't remember us winning there in my lifetime. I don't think we have, have we? The Emirates hasn't been there for too long. Um, but this is this presents the best opportunity of my lifetime for Norwich City to beat Arsenal. I know we've beaten them before. Uh, I remember Holty's goal at Carrow Road against them. Arsenal are in a, in a real state. Um, and I think Norwich City will see this as, a, as an opportunity. In terms of the team news... Um, not too much to worry about. Dimitri Yanoulis will miss out, as well as Christoph Zimmerman. Zimmerman wouldn't have played anyway, so it's just Yanoulis who will be missing. And, and it shows now how, not fortunate because we planned for it, but how good a signing Brandon Williams was. Because myself and I think many others looked at that position and thought, is that really a priority? You know, we've got a good left back there in Yanoulis. Do we really need Brandon Williams? Yes, we did. Farker and Weber knew best. So it'll be Brandon Williams starting in at left back. Uh, in terms of the good news, Ozan Kabak and Matthias Norman are good to go. Kenny McLean um, pulled out of the Scotland squad early on international duty, which made a lot of Norwich fans worry, thinking it was an injury. Apparently it was a slight knee niggle, um, but he should be good, good to go this Saturday. So not too much to worry about in terms of team news. The only other slight concern is that of Josh Sargent. Now he's been on international duty with the United States of America. Uh, he only landed back into Heathrow at five o'clock Friday morning um, and is also complaining of a hamstring injury. So that's going to be a late call on Josh Sargent. And I must say, if I would have heard that uh, he was fit and raring to go. He would have been in my starting 11, actually. I would have had him playing up front. But I'm going to tweak it slightly because of that news. And this is what I'm going to be going for. Tim Krul in goal. Brandon Williams in at left back. My first change is that of Ozan Kabak coming in and replacing Ben Gibson. Now, many of you might be saying, Jack Gibson hasn't been too bad this season. And I would agree with you. But now we've got Ozan Kabak. This is a man who's played Champions League football with Liverpool. There is a real quality about this man. And I know a lot of you will also be saying, well, Jack, he's, he's not played pre-season. He's hardly played football this season. How can you throw him in? Well, I think my response to that would be, we have to throw him in at some point. And a player to the standards of Ozan Kabak should be good enough. Um, and I think he will be good enough. I haven't been disappointed with Ben Gibson at all this season. I think there's been a few little errors as there has been across the whole setup. 
Um, but for me, Kabat comes in next to Grant Hanley. Now, I've kept Grant Hanley in there because I think... He pro- what, is, is he better than Ben Gibson? I'm not sure. I think it's probably unfair to compare. But Grant Hanley's certainly quicker than Ben Gibson. I think that's going to be important against this Arsenal side. Max Aarons in at right back, who I think has been good this season. I think it's a really difficult job he's got in this side with the with the wing backs bombing up so high. It's always going to be difficult for Aarons, but I think on the whole, he's managed it well. It was fascinating to see as well, that apparently on deadline day, Borussia Dortmund came in for Max Aarons, but he wanted to stay at Norwich City, which is, is a testament to the young man. He's been incredibly professional across the last few years because there's been multiple teams come in for him, big teams as well, big European giants. And he's remained committed and gone about business quietly at Norwich City. And I think that's brilliant. Another new signing coming in for me, and that's Matthias Norman in central defensive midfield. I think in terms of an individual impact on a side, this is who I'm most looking forward to watching. I think Matthias Norman, if the reports I'm reading are correct, will be really exciting for Norwich City. And I think it's a position we've struggled in um, ever since sort of Alex Tete um, wasn't quite you know, at the races anymore and, and, and the knees got a bit wobbly. And of course, we had Oliver Skip last season, but we knew that was only ever going to be a loan deal. Um, and it's been evident in the first three games of this season that we need a central defensive midfielder. We've got it in Matthias Norman. And what that also means is we're able to push Billy Gilmore forwards, where I think he will be a lot more proactive and comfortable in them areas. So I'd have Billy Gilmore next to Kenny McLean. Another change for me um, going forwards, and that's Christos Jollis coming in for Todd Cantwell. Now, another controversial one, and I'm not going to lose sleep over um, this if, if Todd Cantwell were to start ahead of Christos Jollis. I think there's something very exciting about Christos Jollis, and you know, that game against Bournemouth, I know it was championship opposition, but there was a lot of very exciting moments in there, and a couple of goals included. I love Todd Cantwell, I'm his biggest fan. I'd just like to see Christos Jollis from the off in this one. Rashica, uh on the other side. He was voted Norwich City's Player of the Month and there's been glimpses of brilliance from him. And then for me, it would have been Josh Sargent up front. But I'm actually going to go for Timu Puki, who of course scored on our last outing against Leicester. Um, this is a man who will score Premier League goals. I, I still don't think he, he's, he looks 100% fit, I must say. He looks a bit fatigued to me. And I know he's had injury niggles and a, a remarkably demanding schedule with both Norwich duties and Finland throughout the Euros. So that's the team. Tim Krul, Brandon Williams, Ozan Kabak, Grant Hanley, Max Ahrens, Matthias Norman, Kenny McLean, Billy Gilmore, Milo Rashica, Christos Jollis and Temu Puki. Uh, I'd love to hear what you would be going for. I suspect a lot of you would have Cantlay. Uh, Cantlay? Cant- Count well, I'm thinking of the goal for Patrick Cantlay. Count well in there over Christos Jollis. I suspect a lot of you, if fit, would have Josh Sargent in there. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on Ozan Kabak, though. Does he go straight in there, or do you keep that defensive pairing the same in Ben Gibson and Grant Hanley? It's a big game for Norwich this weekend. I think what we, we have to remember, though, is this is still Arsenal. Um, and I know they've had a poor start to the season, with that being said, they've also had a very difficult start to the season. Um, I think we should go there, play with freedom and hope for something. I'm not going to give a score prediction because I think this is a game where I'm really intrigued to see how it goes about and how we attack it. I think we've got a good chance. I mean, we created chances against Leicester and should have scored more than we did. And we're unlucky not to score more than we did with that disallowed goal as well. I think we go to Arsenal with every chance and I'll leave it at that. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know your team and your score prediction down in the comments section below. And remember, One Football, the link to download that is in the description. It's completely free of charge. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.